I would say this is my favorite hotel. You know, I love coming here. This is the Mondrian on Sunset Boulevard. This is my room. Um, hotels. <laughs> They actually unlock creativity in you sometimes. You know, you're away from all the material trappings of home and they kind of free you up. And there's Los Angeles, sprawling away. Such a scary city. I'll tell you a little story. See if I zoom in on that little place called the Pink Dot. For all its transients, this little supermarket place um, has been there for decades and I lived in another hotel across the way there for about six months and at the end of, end of the visit I was just dying to get home but there was a miserable final couple of weeks and I didn't have a lot of money and I couldn't eat in restaurants so I used to go down every day to this place called the Pink Dot and get some sandwiches and a big bottle of mineral water and then stagger up to my hotel and smoke dope kept whatever money I had for dope, <laughs> you know, grass, nothing stronger. And it's still there, the pink bloody dot. There's, hang on. there's downtown LA. And this is the room, one of the typical room in the Mondrian. Um, I'll tell you a funny thing, you know, I mean, really, hotels are fucking knocking shops. I mean, right, so they've got like, you know, the, the bar and they try and, it's, so this thing here, if you look at it, um, God, can I focus? It's called indulgences. Do you see that? And what it is, it's a mini vibrator and lube and condoms. It's a little sex kit sitting there beside the chocolate biscuits. This is the hotel where Britney Spears was uh, taken away in section. She was. She vomited in the toilet down in that pool down there, went out of her head and had to be taken away. There was one time a couple of years ago at this pool and there were these soldiers back from Iraq, young, very studly looking guys, and uh, they were in the pool. Oh man, they're really studly looking chaps and these girls got in the pool and they were like little sharks around them. It was fantastic. And why shouldn't a girl want to get laid? It's all good stuff. Look at all these LA people sunning themselves. My word. What's there? Look at oh, she's topless. Sometimes you see people arguing in these hotels. You know, they're rich, but they're fucking miserable. And you think of somebody down there who's staying in like the best Western or some cheap ass holiday inn. And, you know, and they'll be having the fuck of the century. And that's really romantic, you know, no money, but totally in love. Or totally just into each other. And they'll be fucking their brains out. While up here, you know, two people will go to bed and maybe they'll argue. And one will sleep on one side of the bed and one on the other. And you know, it'll be completely bankrupt and impoverished. While down at the cheap ass motel, they're having sex that just money couldn't buy. I find that quite a thought. Mirrors everywhere. I would say there's been some great sex in this bed too, actually. Boys and girls. What I love is this, this thing, right? So this is, it's a TV inside a mirror. But if you're on the bed, you know, hang on, let me make a case. You know, there I am, right? You know, you could watch, watch it all going on in the mirror while you're colluding, having congress with your partner in a nice rose-tinted mirror. <laughs> Hollywood Hills. Not a cloud in the sky, <coughs> but it's such a desperate city. Everybody's here trying to 
get ahead. But there's so many people trying to get ahead. I think the best thing you could do is get out of this city and come up with something remarkable until it actually begs you to come here. But what happens is people come here before they've got anything to gather to get ahead. And I think that's a huge mistake. Get your shit together at home. Be real, you know, be an individual and wait till it invites you to the party. That's the trick with Los Angeles or any city. Well, no, I don't know about any city, but definitely here. You know, go write your songs, write your book, and then come here. Don't come here and then say, oh, wow, I'm writing a book. Or um, I'm going to be a star. Be a star and then come here. <laughs> and then leave. <laughs> leave before the party's over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was at so somebody who was uh, in... Uh, toilet roll there um oh yeah you know i'm i'm, I'm just finished uh, writing my book i wanted to turn around and say oh yeah and who's going to publish it andrex that's wilshire down there ah oh, dear and over the way there is the sunset marquee which is where you remember david gahan Back to Pesh Mode, that's where he OD'd on the heroin. Not to be taken off in an ambulance. You know, um, he technically died for a couple of minutes, didn't it? Or a couple of seconds or something. Naomi Campbell on the cover of Interview Magazine. Beautiful looking girl. I like Naomi Campbell. She's muddling through. Breaking mistakes. There's the pictures of Naomi. There you go. Wonderfully pointless, beautiful picture. Well, I mean, what's she saying there? She's got this man that's kind of very s and -M -y. A bit too s and -M -y when there's blood coming out of the mouth. <laughs> I mean, look. What's all this about? Look at the size of those adverts. I cannot believe that thing of that cat. They're like the... Like, Advertising some soft drink? That ain't gonna make me buy that drink. I think the advertising world needs to catch up with the way people think these days. And I wonder how much that advert cost. Looks disgusting. There's the pool. What's, what's going on down in the pool? No stress, no worries. I saw Chrissy Hind. Uh, do an interview down there the other day. She's um, taking a break from the pretenders at the minute and uh, I think she fell in love with this guy who's like 20 years younger than her and um, they had a, uh, a big spurt of creativity. You know, he was a musician they wrote all these songs together so she's gone out on the road as just being a part of a band uh, with this with this guy, and so they're doing all these interviews. But I heard, you know, that's just uh, a music pursuit at the minute, because he um, offered his hand in marriage, <laughs> and that kind of blew it. And he wanted children, and I think she's had enough of marriage, and she's got children. So, and she was doing an interview down there with him, and he's a good-looking boy, blonde, butch. I like Chrissy Hind. And then afterwards she was sitting out the front waiting for a cab and he was with her. She was like standing there dead cool, just looking while he's on his mobile phone, you know, jiving and working it, <laughs> you know, and her standing there all sanguine. Uh, there, the alley pool, there's your, there, it's funny to think, that is David Hockney's inspiration, well, was, for a while, the way the light danced on those pools. There you go. That's just a fucking David Hockney painting now, isn't it? There's a sunset strip down there. And uh, down here, this is the House of Blues, where Phil Spector... Uh, picked up that lady Lana Clarkson 
and uh, took her back to his mansion and blew her teeth out onto the marble floor with his dreary little gun. Not good work. Um, and over here, this is the this is a lovely look at that Deco hotel, the Art Deco hotel. That comes that that's been there since you know old Hollywood, which is slowly disappearing, unfortunately. Uh, and there's a great chapter. I don't know if you read uh, Rupert Everett's book, uh, The Red Carpet and Other Banana Skins. He actually broke into this hotel in the 80s when it was dilapidated and boarded up and he found that the lifts were actually still working and uh, so he went to the top floor with his friend, I, I'm not sure if it was a girl or a boy, and um, went out into the balcony in the alley evening and did some drugs and hung out, maybe made love, had sex, whatever. and. Uh, it's it's just a very evocative chapter in his book, and uh, over here this is this is some other place now. But this used to be called the, the the Hyatt Hotel, and it was nicknamed the Riot House because Led Zeppelin would stay here a lot when they toured in the early seventies. They take up a whole floor, and there'd be wild sex. You know, there'd be stories of Jimmy Page tying a girl to a bloody chair and then putting her in the elevator and sending her down to reception naked. Which, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's rock, that was rock and roll then, I guess. And uh, wild. And anyway, the thing is, I stayed in this hotel for six months in the early 90s. Um, I'd been over the year before to record a record, which I was very, very proud of. And now I'd come back and I was going to do some promotion, see if I could get my rec this record played on the radio. And uh, they put me in this hotel on the seventh floor. And, and I arrived one evening straight from Ireland and uh, walked out. Th th that's all glass now, but that used to be balconies. And I walked out. It was the evening when I arrived and I walked out and I looked across Los Angeles, which all its twinkling lights at night time. I thought, oh fuck me, I've arrived, this is going to be amazing, I've made a great record, you know, it's, it's going to be great. But, uh, and I loved it, and, but by this, by, by the, uh, suddenly one day after like six or seven months, uh, I got a phone call saying my record wasn't getting played on the radio, it wasn't going to fly, and that was that, you're going home boy. And I went out onto the balcony. And I wasn't really devastated about going ho going home. I was look I was actually feeling a bit homesick. What I was devastated about was my record was just dead in the water, you know. Even though it was a good one, and uh, I just wanted to fucking jump from that seventh floor balcony. And I stood and I leaned over and honestly thought about it. Uh, and of course, I didn't do it. And I am really glad I did not, because you know you live. You live another day to do new things. Ah, oh, I tell you, cities scare me. Are you any safer in the countryside, really, when it comes down to it? Is the countryside really any more um, kinder? Some nasty little villages. <laughs> At least this place doesn't pretend to be anything other than what it is. Somebody in a motel there with not too hate when he's to rub together a couple, making love, maybe smoke a few reefers and just make fucking great love, kissing deeply, big wet slobby kisses. Mm. Funny how they decorate these places. Look at this. Fucking <laughs> Don't bite the hand that feeds. Or bite the hand that feeds. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, I think I left my hand in the room. Look, mirrors, just mirrors everywhere. What's with the fucking mirrors? Do, 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 do. Mirrors everywhere, see that? Just mirrors every...
God, it wouldn't do to have a face like a burst cushion staying in this room, would it? Fucking mirrors. That's a very severe haircut I had. I wonder how many people have uh, forgotten the number they've entered into their safe. And when the sun goes down, it's just this glimmer of twinkling lights. Looks lovely at, at night time.